Yes, please, we can hear you. Thank you. OK, thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. Many thanks for taking time out of your busy schedules to attend this webinar session with the management team of Stambic IBTC Infrastructure Fund. As a brief introduction, the Stambic IBTC Infrastructure Fund is a closed-ended fund that was established in 2021 under a 100 billion shelf program called the fund. It, it is registered with the Securities and Exchange Commission. The fund's objective is to bridge the funding gap in Nigeria's infrastructure sector through a careful selection of eligible infrastructure investments across core infrastructure sectors. On the webinar today, we have representatives of the Stambic IPTC Infrastructure Fund team, as well as representatives of the joint issuing houses, um, which are Stambic IBTC Capital and FCMB Capital Markets Limited. I am Abimbola Kasim with FCMB Capital Markets team, and I would serve as the anchor for today's session. The core focus of this webinar is a presentation by the fund manager, which provides an overview of the Stambic IBTC Infrastructure Fund, its governance process, and the fund performance um, since inception. After which, I would step in to wrap up on the current Series 3 offer, which is currently open. Before we commence, may I ask that all participants kindly remain muted for the duration of the presentation to allow for an audible and efficient flow by the presenters. The agenda today provides for a Q&A session at the end of the presentation, during which you will be unmuted to ask your questions and the fund manager will provide answers. While the presentation is going on, please feel free to drop any question you have in the chat box. And all of these will be answered during the Q&A session. To start off, I will hand over to Dolu Olubenjo, the Chief Investment Officer of Stambic IBTC Infrastructure Fund for the opening remarks and introduction of the fund. Thank you. So thanks, uh, Bimbo, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, apologies, I was just struggling with my with my camera there. Um, but good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure to have you on this series three offer. Just bear with me one second to put up my camera. Um, it's a pleasure to have everyone on the call. Um, we are. Glad that you can make time this afternoon to be present for this uh, webinar. As has been said, the objective is to be able to articulate through the next one hour what it is we're trying to do uh, with respect to Stambic ABTC Infrastructure Fund Series 3 offer. Um, and it is it, to bring to our investors' attention the myriad of opportunities that, ex, um, um, that exist within the infrastructure asset space. I believe I'm visible right now. Um, just making sure my camera is on. Thank you. It is on. So this is to provide um, information to all of our investors as to what this is about. Um, we're a 100 billion fund, as has been said, and we believe that we've been able to uh, demonstrate that there's an opportunity within the infrastructure asset class. Um, as of since the inception of the fund, We've been able to make cash distribution to investors totaling around 16%. Um, and the price appreciation of the fund has gone up uh, by 6%. So when you had everything together, um, year inception to date, uh, we have a total return in the region of 20%, um, 22% thereabout. Um, and our premise remains the same. We're here to continually look out for infrastructure projects to bring to the attention of our investors. We have a robust pipeline, robust governance structure that allows us to be able to do this. The next um, couple of minutes will be done uh, to elaborate on many of these themes. And I would encourage everyone to um, ask questions. Uh, let us know what your concerns are. Um, 
will raise the issues that you have with respect to the fund, and I hopefully we'll be able to address those concerns. in our series three uh, uh, in fundraise. Uh, with, without further ado, I would hand it back to Rotimi uh, to kick off. But thank you everyone for joining and really do have a good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you, Dodo. Uh, good afternoon again, everyone. Uh, thanks for taking the time to be here with us uh, this afternoon. My name is Roti Mitete. Uh, I'm a senior vice president with the fund, and I'll be taking the first part of our presentation while my colleague uh, Larry Mohamed will then take the second part of the presentation. So, we'll, uh, over the next, um, say, 30 to 45 minutes, we'll be looking at uh, an overview of Stambi Capital Asset Management Limited, the fund managers of uh, Stambi Capital Infrastructure Fund. We'll then have an overview of the fund itself. Uh, before touching on very briefly the macros and infrastructure updates um, in the Nigeria economy. We'll then go uh, to talk about what the fund has done and why we believe uh, the fund should be the right partner for uh, yourselves as an investor. And of course, we'll then talk about the Series 3 offer that we have currently open. Uh, now, about the fund and um, the fund manager. The fund is a 100 billion uh, Naira fund. Uh, we have a shell program registered with Securities and Exchange Commission for this amount. The fund was established in 2021 uh, through this program. Of this program, we are meant to approach the markets from time to time and issue, issue uh, securities in tranches or series, uh, such that we are able to then provide finance to uh, project sponsors to, to fund infrastructure projects that we have qualified. Under the program, uh, we have successfully done a series one and a series two, um, and both have combined to uh, this, uh, an amount of around 15.3, sorry, 22.6 uh, billion era. Our series two offer, which closed sometime in June this year, uh, was oversubscribed. Uh, we are set out to raise 15 billion era, uh, but we raised in excess of that. Uh, I'll touch more on uh, uh, how we fared in terms of um, us approaching the markets in the past. Uh, now, a brief about the program structure itself, a 100 billion uh, Naira program. It's for 99 years, and we're going to be issuing in tranches as we deem fit, uh, considering what projects we have to fund. We, uh, as a fund, it is structured as a unit trust scheme, uh, which means, again, it is close-ended. Uh, we are Pan-African to the extent that we're able to invest within Nigeria and offshore within Africa. The currency of the program is the Nigerian Naira. Uh, so at this time, every security we issue is denominated in the Naira. Um, we've specified um, within the program that we may be listing the securities under this uh, infrastructure fund on um, a recognized security exchange. Um, and in this case, we've uh, picked FMDQ. <clears throat> and the sec sectors we target as a fund uh, include energy, uh, oil and gas. Within oil and gas specifically, it's gas that we target. Uh, we also target transport and logistics, uh, information and communication technology, real estate, particularly uh, student accommodation uh, within tertiary institutions. Municipal and industrial waste management, water treatment and recycling, as well as healthcare. Um, just to show us how the fund is structured uh, in terms of how we bring money in and how we make disbursements and invest the money that we bring in. So we seek capital from time to time uh, from the markets, uh, from qualifying investors like yourselves. Um, investors that are able to invest in the fund include pension funds asset managers, uh, insurers, HNIs like yourself, HNIs, I, by HNIs I mean uh, high net worth individuals. Um, so we get the funding in and we then make investments in infrastructure funds. So if you look at this structure, we have investor one, two, three, and several other investors obviously, bringing the money or the capital required into the fund. Uh, we then deploy the capital into projects, ABC, and several other projects as a fund manager. 
However, in between when we receive capital from investors and when we invest them in projects, uh, a lot of work goes in between. Uh, one of which is for us to be able to, one, uh, source infrastructure projects that we'll be investing in, take those projects through our governance pro uh, processes, uh, which would typically include, include evaluation and uh, getting approvals, the requisite approvals. Uh, so in between giving these approvals, we have the investment committee, uh, which gives approval at two different stages, so the screening committee and the final approval given at the investment committee uh, stage. We'll touch more on this as well. So investment highlights, uh, what underpins the things we've uh, been doing as a fund? Uh, we believe that we're a trusted uh, fund manager. Uh, so the fund has a trusted fund manager, which is family with asset management, with experience of over 20 years, and funds other management in excess of 900 billion euro. Um, as fund managers, were arguably Nigeria's uh, biggest non-pension fund um, asset managers. Um, so again, the fund has predetermined or predefined exits, i.e., you know when you get into the fund, you already know when you are getting out of the fund. Um, it means that the series that we issued under the program, they are tenured. Um, the are series one and two are tenured at 10 years, as well as um, how we also structured our series three. And we'll still talk more about the structure of the series three later again. Uh, we also have structured governance protocols for the fund. Uh, it means that uh, within the Stambik IBGC a corporate governance culture that we have and by extension standard bank group uh, we also key into the structure that exists as such we have the investment committee which uh, takes a look at the investments we intend to make and also grants the approval uh, after due consideration i will uh, talk more about um, the structure of our investment committee and its constitution in terms of membership we also have an advisory board uh, made up of representatives of investors mainly um, and some independent individuals, particularly from the academia. We pride ourselves as uh, fund managers that have the requisite technical expertise to uh, one, invest our uh, investors' uh, capital properly, uh, get them the returns that um, they, they require, as well as being able to return uh, their capital to them when it is time uh, to make such uh, returns, uh, which Typically, in this case, is when uh, the tenor of uh, the securities they invested in expires. We invest investor capital in uh, diversified opportunities. Um, so I've spoken earlier about the sectors that we target. So we make sure that we do not um, concentrate our investments in any one sector or in any one asset. As, um, as fund managers and as a group, we are very big on um, ESG impacts. Uh, we want to create as much as possible, possibly very positive impacts on um, the environment and the communities in which we operate, uh, the society as well. As such, we do not uh, support or back projects that would negatively impact on the environment or the society. Um, overarching over all these, um, uh, the structures are uh, the rather the highlights are provided is the strong financial performance which um, we've been able to deliver to our investors and which we continue to uh, target um, as we move forward. So this has led to us being um, able to successfully raise our Series 2 offer uh, based on the performance that we've delivered on our Series 1. We we're able to re make uh, successfully raise our Series 2 offer um, and where we were oversubscribed. Um, so we uh, we, our subscription level for the series two of ours was 104.3 percent. So it took the, the fund uh, since its inception uh, been able to deliver just under 18, 16 percent um, as of the end of June 2022 uh, to our investors, which represents um, 6.81 percent um, above of the benchmark, which is the federal government uh, of Nigeria bond, 10-year uh, bond. Yield. And when I speak about um, the performance uh, of the fund later, we'll touch more on this. Now, speaking about um, our economy very briefly. 
So Nigeria is the, is the largest economy in Africa uh, per our GDP numbers. Uh, we stand, uh, we stood at 176 trillion era as at the end of 2021. Um, we do believe that uh, for every country that has um, a large population, the requirements to have a matching level of infrastructure uh, also exist as well. Um, as such, when you then compare what we uh, we have as a country in terms of uh, infrastructure that is on ground, the deficit um, is quite huge uh, between what we should have for the size of population that we have and what we currently have. Uh, the GDP continues to grow, uh, or rather has been growing, but it's been projected to uh, dip uh, between 2022 down to uh, 2026. So the growth rates uh, from 2022, which uh, is forecast to end at 2.4 percent, is now expected to even go uh, down for that to around 2.0 percent. Now talking about uh, infrastructure as an industry for us in Nigeria, the infrastructure sector has continued to grow. Uh, between 2021 and 2022, uh, it is expected that it would have grown from investment in infrastructure would have grown from 7.1 uh, trillion era to 9.1 trillion era, and is now projected to grow even further to around 17 trillion era by the year 2026. Uh, it just then shows that it is the space that uh, one needs to play in uh, going forward uh, to be able to one uh, help bridge the gap and two uh, make very good returns as well. The construction industry um, is expected to continue to grow as well, uh, estimated to grow between 3.1% uh, in 2021 to 5.0% uh, in 2026. Again, if you look at this relative to uh, the size of the country's population, uh, you would uh, believe that um, this growth is uh, quite on the low side. Uh, so a lot of the work we're currently doing is to help uh, the society and the country get to the level where we begin to see the growth that matches uh, the growth in our population. Now, uh, just to quickly talk on the investment process uh, about the fund now. The process we take, uh, I had mentioned earlier that between when we take capital from the markets and when we deploy the capital into um, projects, we do a lot of work, uh, which is the investment process. Um, so it starts with us identifying uh, the right projects and the right partners to work with. Uh, so we use our relationships and our network, uh, one, as a fund manager, and two, um, as a member of a, a very uh, big group of uh, financial institutions, uh, the Standard Bank. Uh, so at this point, uh, we just end up ended, we end up identifying the opportunities in, we want to consider for investment. We then move these opportunities to the uh, deal appraisal and due diligence stage. Uh, the first part of which is, is the deal, uh, deal appraisal stage. This ends with us then approaching a uh, uh, deal screening committee to then get an approval uh, to see if the project is one in line with the fund strategy and two, if the fund has an appetite to take on such a project. Uh, once that is determined and we have the approval at this stage, we then proceed to carry out the uh, necessary due diligence uh, before we then approach our investment committee for uh, the final approval for us to be able to uh, proceed to invest in such projects. Now, the due diligence that we carry, carry out uh, includes technical due diligence where we want to look at uh, the uh, te technical aspects of the project, including um, environmental and impact uh, assessment uh, studies. We also carry out commercial um, due diligence, financial due diligence, legal due diligence, um, as well as doing character check on uh, the both the entities we are backing, as well as the people uh, behind such entities. Uh, again, this then once we get the approval of the investment committee, it then leads us to the next stage where we make sure that all the conditions precedents that uh, conditions present that have been set uh, in the approval process or the review process are met uh, and completely discharged before we uh, moved to this making disbursements to such uh, projects. Uh, subsequent to making disbursements, uh, we continue to make uh, 
do carry out monitoring on the uh, investments that we've made, i.e. we make uh, timely or periodic uh, uh, reports to the investment committee on the progress of uh, the investments that we've made. Uh, this is quite important such that um, we are much alive to our responsibility in protecting as much as possible the investments that we've made. So we know if there is an issue that is coming up, uh, we are able to quickly work with the project sponsors to nip them in the pot, and uh, there are no surprises to us as a fund um, or to our investors. Our investment strategy um, that helps us to one protect the investments we, that we make and two to also be able to deliver the um, returns that we target to for our investors. Um, is one we we do not we do not um, invest in projects that uh, whose uh, sponsors are not credible. So we we'll make sure that we only get in bed with project sponsors that um, are credible and uh, have very good track record. Um, on the second hand, again, we then make sure that uh, we invest in projects that are able to deliver this cash flow that uh, will be enough for us to be able to meet our obligations to our investors, uh, which typically would include one, uh, the periodic returns we need to make to the investors and two, being able to return capital at the end of the tenure of the investment. Uh, number three, we also make sure that uh, we target investment structures where competitive returns uh, and premium above risk rates is what we're able to obtain and deliver to our investors. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we're quite big on um, what happens in the environment where we operate or the projects where we fund uh, where they are carried out. So uh, the ESG aspect to our investment is quite key for us as well. Yeah, we also make sure that we do not take unsecured uh, lending positions when uh, we lend to projects, um, i.e. we make sure that projects that we back or investments that we make have credit enhancements and guarantees um, where we are able to know that uh, even if the project that we invested in or backed fails, uh, there's always someone else at the back to um, build the project out. Uh, again, we as a fund, we are able to invest in debt, equity, as well as mezzanine, uh, we're able to provide mezzanine finance to uh, infrastructure projects. Um, however, for our series one and two, the uh, securities we issued are debt securities, uh, so we've only invested them in debt. Um, and the what we're offering for the series three as well is debt. And uh, we do not believe that um, the enormity of what is required to bridge Nigeria's infrastructure gap is one that one only one institution can shoulder. Um, as such, we continue to explore partnership with uh, relevant institutions within the country and even outside the country um, so that we can partner to help solve uh, this very uh, critical problem. Uh, amongst these institutions is the International Finance uh, Corporation, uh, the Nigerian Sovereign Investment Authority, uh, Infra Credit. Uh, out, uh, when we get to the uh, stage where we talk about our project pipeline, uh, Larry will touch on a very important project we are currently working on uh, where we are partnering with Infra Credit. Um, then we are also um, exploring partnerships with uh, the World Bank as well as the African Finance uh, Corporation. Um, I've spoken earlier about the uh, sectors that we target in our investment activities. Uh, so under energy, we uh, target typically captive power plants. Uh, transmission, uh, distribution, and storage uh, uh, installations, clean energy and renewables, particularly um, around solar. Then we invest also, or we target investments in gas. Uh, uh, gas in this case will be CNG, LPG, and LNG. Then in terms of transport, um, we target investments in um, seaports, airports, um, as well as roads. In healthcare, uh, we target investments in hospital projects as well as the diagnostic centers. Um, on that real estate, I've already mentioned that um, we are quite big on student accommodation. As recently as two weeks ago, we had um, a webinar on student accommodation on trying to uh, galvanize all stakeholders towards um, helping to 
target this sector, solving the, that very critical and important problem. In terms of IC, ICT, uh, we typically target investments in data centers, fiber optic networks, etc. Yeah, in terms of governance, uh, the investment committee uh, for the fund is chaired by Andrew Johnston. Andrew Johnston is the CEO for uh, Climate Fund Managers um, and is founder of uh, Phoenix Infraworks. Andrew has experience of over 30 years um, working as a fund manager and uh, investment professional uh, both in Africa as well as in Europe. He currently manages funds um, that have uh, fund under management in excess of 2 billion US dollars. Andrew is supported on the investment committee uh, by several other very experienced uh, professionals. Then we have the advisory board, uh, which I had mentioned earlier. Uh, the advisory board held its first uh, meeting on 29th of September 2022. Uh, it's been fully constituted. It's been constituted with four members, and a fifth member is meant to join um, the board before its next meeting, which will be the first of our 2023. So, why are we um, encouraging you to invest in um, standard IBC infrastructure funds? We've been able to um, uh, successfully raise uh, funds in the market uh, through our Series One and Series Two offer. Uh, as with two of ours, 104% subscribed. We currently have 41 unique investors, um, 15 of whom are corporates and 21 of whom are high net worth individuals like yourselves. Um, among these 15 uh, corporate institutions are, these, or are seven of the top 10 uh, uh, pension funds within the country in terms of um, assets under management. Uh, then we currently have 55% uh, of the fund value fully deployed to, into infrastructure projects. Uh, the balance of 45% uh, is going to be deployed before the end of uh, this year, uh, sometime in December. And Larry will talk a bit more about uh, the pipeline. Then uh, we, not, uh, we, we also are able to say that our series one um, of our uh, or the proceeds has been fully deployed into infrastructure projects. In terms of um, what we target in returns, um, it's two, two to five percent of the two to five percent above the prevailing yield on the FGM bond with a similar tenor to the remaining tenor of each series. I.e., uh, for this series that we're currently offering, it will mean that. Uh, the benchmark will be the FGM bond that has 10 years to its uh, maturity. So that's the FGM 10 year bond. The fund manager, that is asset management, as, uh, sorry, Stambic ABC Asset Management Limited, um, is, trip, is double A rated by Augusto and Company, as well as um, double A plus rated by GRC. Uh, just to quickly touch on the uh, return performance that we've been able to deliver to our investors. Um, we've, and again, we've tried to benchmark um, other similar securities there. Uh, unfortunately, as our market um, has not fully developed in terms of um, the infrastructure fund space, uh, we're unable to get very direct equivalents to compare ourselves again. But we've also still gone out to uh, pick securities that we believe are closely related to uh, our, our fund as well as what we offer. Um, Chief among them is um, the Lekki Free Zone uh, infrastructure bond that was issued uh, in 2021 and backed by the uh, by InfraCredit. Um, so it's if you look at the line, it shows that the um, Lekki Free Zone infrastructure bond would have delivered uh, total returns of around 16.72% uh, to its investors by the end of the year 2022. Um, we also compared uh, security against uh, similar A-rated corporate bonds, um, and there are nine of them in, the, in this bucket. And the, by the end of uh, 2022, we, those, the, those securities on average would have delivered returns of 15.72% uh, to their investors. We also compared directly against the benchmark, uh, which is the FGN 10-year, uh, the yield on the FGN 10-year bond. Um, and 
we've tracked that uh, by the end of the year, that would have delivered uh, just under 15% uh, to the investors. Um, another aspect of uh, comparison is in terms of um, the, the stock exchange. So we picked the NGX 50, which is the top 50 traded securities on the Nigerian stock exchange, um, which we have projected that uh, would have delivered just under 9% uh, returns to their investors on the outreach uh, by the end of the year. Now, speaking of um, Stabil Capital Infrastructure Fund and the returns we were looking at here, in terms of cash distribution, um, since inception, uh, we, we project that uh, we have delivered just under 16% return to our investors by the end of December, while total returns, which would include uh, both the cash returns as well as appreciation in the price of um, the units of the fund, uh, it will be over 20% that would have delivered to uh, our investors. The fund um, already as at the end of June um, has delivered it around 15.8% uh, to investors, uh, which represents uh, just under 7% in excess of uh, what the FGN 10 year bond um, has printed. So uh, Larry will talk more on our uh, pipeline um, and um, we can then after Larry's presentation, we'll take your questions and uh, hopefully we can uh, be able to answer all your questions at that point. Thank you very much. Thanks for your attention. Okay, thank, thank you very you. much, um, Rosimi, and good afternoon, mm -hmm. ladies and gentlemen. Um, I think my job here is uh, quite simple. Um, just to quickly delve a bit more into some of those sectors and the transactions that um, that we're talking about, that, that Rotini has spoken about, you know, earlier on. So um, just to provide, you know, some context, um, if you look at what we have on the screen, first of all, you will see that um, the sectors that we are targeting are sectors where we can solve for real problems, you know, that are impacting millions of Nigerians on a daily basis. Okay, so take gas, for example, we've uh, funded a um, an LPG uh, terminal, we provided 4.2 billion for the construction of about 20,000 metric tons, um, you know, storage capacity for um, LPG, which is a domestic uh, cooking gas. And I'm sure many of us on the call will agree that we've had challenges with supply of, um, you know, LPG, uh, domestic cooking gas, to homes in the last, um, you know, couple of uh, months. I would say between 18 to 24 months, prices have gone up. Availability has been an issue, and inadequate storage is one of the key drivers of that um, challenge. So that's one area where we have provided um, you know, support from the Stambik IBTC Infrastructure Fund. Also, we funded um, a teaching hospital within a private university as well. OK, um, I mean, healthcare, we all agree, is also a challenged um, sector in Nigeria. When we think about the requirements in terms of um, ability to even procure um, foreign exchange, to seek medical um, care outside of the country. Also, uh, in availability of um, required equipment to look after um, people is also a challenge. So the angle for us is to say that, OK, how can we come into play? How can we support you know, that sector and then deliver um, you know, value to both the beneficiaries of those projects in terms of uh, people seeking medical care as well as investors? So which is um, you know, the core of you know, what we do looking for those sort of uh, opportunities, solving real life um, problems and then um, delivering value. Also look at um, transport. Um, you will agree with me that um, transport has also been a challenge over the years, poor road networks, um, inadequate um, rail networks as well. So what we've done there under Project Phoenix is to collaborate with a company that is developed, that is um, rehabilitating a road, right? Um, that leads to one of their factories but the good thing is the road will be to the benefit of the entire community. And it has been done under the federal government's uh, road infrastructure tax credit scheme. So reliance is not necessarily on the road that we are funding. We've provided the funding to a company who is in the manufacturing sector, who has um, you know, a very robust uh, cash flow profile and um, you know, is looking to fund the rehabilitation of that project. So 
those are some of the things that you will continue to see within uh, you know the scope of what we do and in doing all of this there are certain things that are very very critical from a security perspective so we are aware of the fact that investors you know will typically ask how safe their investments are especially when you are looking at alternative uh, uh, investments such as this so basically what we typically do is to assess the project and the project um, in detail um, and then we look for the best ways to mitigate the, the the risk that we are that we identify so some of the things we do typically we'll be to ensure that we are collaborating with credible sponsors like um, Ruth me had mentioned earlier, credibility of the sponsors is very important. Have they done it before? They have capacity to step in if the project uh, become challenged. And what some of the things we do in that instance is to ensure that they inject adequate uh, you know, equity into the into the specific projects that they are funding. In addition to that, uh, we also ensure that they have the capacity to step in, you know, in the future or at any point during the during our relationship with um, you know those um, sponsors also beyond that we also look at um, you know taking security over necessary assets talking about right so for example we talk about um, you know all asset the venture on um, the project on assets of the sponsor and things like that just to ensure that um, you know we are able to to recover in case there is any gap or any shortfall in um, the expected uh, you know inflow Above all that, again, uh, we look at um, ways to get um, guarantees, especially from the project um, sponsors as well. OK, guarantees that are on demand um, for, to cover interest payments, to cover principal repayments. And in certain instances, we also extend that uh, to third parties as well. So like Rotimi mentioned earlier, there's one of the projects or what there are two transactions that we are funding where there is a third party you know, guarantor for those projects and that guarantor is InfraCredit, who is a um, who is a DFI that's that operates in Nigeria. And their key focus is to um, is to provide guarantees so that um, financiers are able to provide funding you know, with comfort into uh, projects, especially those that are still at uh, the greenfield um, stage. So we do all of those just to ensure that we we we, we we just to ensure that you know the investments that we make are safe, and that um, our investors are protected from potential um, you know downside risk. So talking a bit more about um, you know some of the deals that we have on the screen, um, I've talked about Project Phoenix under the federal government's road infrastructure tax credit scheme, whereby companies uh, are allowed to um, take on board um, you know roads that qualify within the scheme, and then they will use their money or their resources to finance the rehabilitation or, or development of those roads and instead of um, and instead of them you know um, making tax payments you know to the government directly based on their their, their their regular business okay what they then do is they will submit an application for a for a tax um, waiver of sorts such that uh, the amount they spend on the road can then be recovered from the profits that they make over an agreed uh, period and what that does for companies is that um, it enables them to channel their own resources into areas that will impact them as well as the environment where they they, they operate in um, for project editing um, that has to do with um, the development of a of a liquefied uh, natural gas uh, processing plant in the in the middle belt and you know that is strategically located in the center of um, Nigeria, such that from that uh, processing plant, um, the supply the company is able to supply um, gas to major health centers as well as um, across across Nigeria. You know, in the northern region, southern region, and and, and, and where have you where you have um, you know adequate uh, demand for for gas, and that dovetails into you know the power sector because Considering the challenges that we've seen uh, in the power sector, more and more companies and even private, uh, you know, estates and the like are moving away from relying on the national grid um, for their power supply. So you have renewables, you have, um, you know, gas-fired uh, turbines and the like. So that's where the opportunity is. And financing, um, you know, uh, such uh, facilities will do a lot for the country generally in terms of 
power generation and uh, consumption. And uh, I'll also talk about uh, Project Camion, which is the which are the which is the the, the project uh, I spoke about earlier that has to do with uh, infra credit uh, guarantee. So there are two sub projects there. One is to finance an LPG LNG plant, and the other one is to finance uh, transport and logistics uh, infrastructure solution. Right. I've I've spoken about you know the challenges that we have across uh, in various sectors. So this is just uh, one of the ways by which uh, we are supporting uh, you know uh, those those particular sectors. And the good thing for investors in the fund is that it comes with um, a third party guarantee, you know, a credible uh, 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 party. Um, healthcare. Uh, so for Project um, Silver Star, which is uh, also to provide uh, funding to the healthcare sector, and for this specific um, project. Is to fund um, about one billion. Is to provide about one billion into the expansion of a specialist uh, hospital. So the hospital is focused on, you know, cancer um, diagnostics and treatment. Okay, again, it speaks to the point around inability of people to go out there to start adequate uh, medical care, considering the challenges we are having with uh, with foreign exchange uh, uh, um, procurement, as well as the time it even takes for you to get a visa. To travel out of the country, so it's becoming more and more difficult, and we need to really solve, you know, our own problems internally. So that's a key driver for us in providing support for that uh, particular um, project. Project Pace. I've spoken about the issues we have with uh, power. So this is to provide um, um, about six billion for the to fund um, an IPP project, an independent uh, power project, in one of the uh, viable states in the southwestern um, region of Nigeria. Where um, you know the project, uh, when when the project is completed, it will deliver power to um, one of the state um, government um, in the in the, the southwest. So state government assets, and the transaction is backed by an ISPU. Um, you know, which again speaks to how we think about uh, protecting our investors amongst them other uh, basic of uh, security structures that we bolt on the onto the transactions that we that we execute. Our uh, project Aurora is also um, a healthcare transaction, uh, which is to provide up to 8 billion naira uh, for a healthcare facility, a one, an existing 160 bed uh, facility, which is looking to expand and also, uh, you know, procure more uh, healthcare uh, equipment, you know, because the demand is really, really growing. It's been, it's been growing since um, the, the uh, COVID-19 uh, era, and we expect that it's going to continue to grow, given the challenges uh, that I have mentioned already. Um, so I'll just um, move on to the next slide. And the next slide is just to show how deep um, the pipeline that we have, that we are working on, how deep it is. Um, like Rotimi mentioned at the start of the presentation, we've registered a 100 billion naira program. Um, currently, the estimated size of uh, what we can, what we, what we can do from all these uh, projects that I have mentioned, you know, is in excess of 130 billion. OK, so as we move closer and closer to full disbursement of the 100 billion, the plan is that we we'll get back into the market with, um, you know, even uh, more programs so that we can tackle the issues um, and the sectors where we are seeing, um, you know, opportunities more and more. So it's quite diversified. Um, as you can see, we've got logistics, healthcare, we have telecoms, we have real estate, uh, student accommodation in particular. Um, I, you know, we, we, we had um, a seminar um, a few weeks ago where, you know, we are told that um, we have about 2.1 million students in Nigeria's uh, universities, and those universities are only able to provide uh, housing facilities for somewhere between 10 to 15 percent of the entire student population. And even if you drill down further, you find that a substantial number of those uh, of those uh, hostels are in very very poor condition, not suitable for for uh, uh, you know not not suitable for for the students that are meant to actually live in there. So there's a massive gap there, and this will go a long way in impacting the quality of the graduates that we are able to uh, churn out in Nigeria from time to time. Um, so on that note, uh, I'll just uh, stop. And hand over to hand it back to the train houses.
Many thanks, Rotimi, Larry, and Dolu um, for bringing us to SPA in this presentation. Um, following the success of the fund's first two issuances, um, the fund manager is now desirous of um, launching a third series, um, which I would refer to as the fund's series three securities. Um, this is to consolidate on the progress made thus far by using the capital raised to take advantage of opportunities within the Nigeria's infrastructure space. <clears throat> the Series 3 offer has a target size of 19.99 billion, um, a tenor of 10 years, and a target return of um, between 2% to 5% above the prevailing yield on the FGN bond with a similar tenor to the remaining um, tenor of um, the series. This we will explain later. The minimum investment required for series three is 800,000 units and a further multiples of 500,000 units. Um, each unit sells for 160 Naira. Um, the proceeds from series three offer will be utilized um, strictly for debt investments, such as debt financing to so infrastructure or infrastructure related projects, companies and SPVs in Nigeria. Um, the target sectors are energy, healthcare, transport and logistics, ICT and telecommunications. Target investors include pension fund administrators, asset managers, insurance companies, um, HNIs, um, that's high net worth individuals such as yourselves, um, moving on to the next slide, please. Thank you. This is three upper opened on Friday, 25th November 2022, and is scheduled to close on Wednesday, 21st December 2022. Um, we expect to receive the SEC no objection to the basis of allotment on Friday 13th, January 2023, and investors' accounts would be credited with their units by Tuesday, 17th of January 2023. You can subscribe to the Series 3 offer by submitting completed application forms together with the evidence of payments of your subscription and required KYC documents to any of the listed receiving agents on this slide. Um, they are Stambic IBTC Asset Management Limited, Stambic IBTC Capital Limited, and FCMB Capital Markets Limited. Um, thanks for participating in this um, webinar. We'll stop here and um, take your questions. Thank you very much. So I'll go to the Q and A to see questions. Chat box. So you'll be unmuted. If you want to um, ask questions, you can please indicate and would we'll allow you to speak. Um, otherwise, you can drop your questions in the chat box. Thank you very much. Um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for um, joining this meeting. Um, Avimbala is available for questions, and we will be grateful to hear um, anything that you need. Really, thank you.
Hi, Debob. Um, you could speak to the tenor of the fund. Yes, please. I mean, if there are anything that you would like to clarify, please go ahead. Um, if you want to, do you, do you want to speak now? Do, do, do I spotlight you? Okay, but your video isn't turned on yet. Hi. Hi everyone. Um, we will just speak to the tenor of the one in itself. I think as has been detailed earlier, this particular series three is going to be for a period of 10 years, after which um, it will be brought to an end, even though the program in itself is for a total period of 99 years. So just feel to highlight that. Thank you. Any more questions? Um, I've been bother. Yes, Dolu. Thanks. I'm just mindful, if you don't mind, that we probably just approaching the end of the call. And I do, I would just like here, I was looking at the message box, and I don't think there are any questions. So I'm going to assume that um, you have anchored yourself on Ruth and Larry. Hi, sorry, I can see a question in the Q&A section. Someone asked, how long has the fund been in existence? Ah, okay. Bimbo, can I pass this to you then? Okay, yes, thanks. Um, the fund has been in existence since 2021. Um, we, we launched um, the first series in 2021. And the second series 2022 and the third series um, is being launched in 2022 as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Abimbala. So for the person that asked that, um, I hope that answers your question. Thank you. If there are more questions, please you can use the chat and lay it out and our colleagues are here. Well, I, I would take it to mean that um, the presentation has been very, very comprehensive. In the absence of any question or any inquiry, so we set the webinar for um, about two hours, I think. So I mean, we can still leave um, some time so that. More people perhaps can um, join the call for another five minutes. If you want to turn off your video or if you still want to stay on video so that we can just okay, there's, a, there's a question. Oh, have they not been unmuted? Someone says kindly unmute me. Right, let me see if it's possible. So, so the question is. 
please, are there government policies that back up this? It's not so clear. So I think um, the person is asking if there are government policies that support um, the infrastructure um, fund. Um, am I permitted to allot the questions as I deem fit? Yes, please go ahead. Uh, Larry, do you want to, to take? No, I'll, I'll take the question. Uh, All right, rest me. Thank you. All right, thanks. Uh, so on the whole, uh, the government has uh, different, or rather, has uh, the policies, different policies that guide infrastructure investment in the different infrastructure uh, classes, i.e., uh, you then have a policy or a master plan for transport, uh, maybe another one for um, energy, etc. Uh, so there is no one size fits all policy for government. But if we want to talk about infrastructure, uh, talk about legal regulatory framework, for instance, where government comes into this. Uh, take federal government, for instance. Uh, you are then beginning to talk about the partnership between the private sector and government. In that case, um, you are looking at the ICRC, uh, the ICRC Act, and the ICRC as a body itself, uh, who oversees government uh, concessions, etc. And for state governments as well, each of them they have their various um, departments, offices, uh, whatever nomenclature they give it for public uh, and private partnerships uh, at the state level. Thanks, Bebo. Okay, someone said you just read today of a cancelled tax holiday. Bimbo, please confirm you can hear me. Yes, I can. All right, thanks. Uh, so I'm I'm sure this person is asking uh, in relation to the uh, road project we are undertaking or we are supporting under the federal government's road infrastructure tax credit scheme. Uh, so the clear difference between um, a tax holiday and this would be, in this case, uh, the, there is a government blueprint for this scheme and the final approving body for any project to be undertaken under the scheme is the Federal Executive Council, uh, the FEC, where the, the president chairs, the, um, the council and the ministers are, are members. So this project that we're about to support has approvals up to this final level, um, that's one. Um, it also has an approval from the, a concurrence rather, from the Federal Inland Revenue Service, uh, because for obvious reasons, it's the taxes that are meant to go to the service that will now uh, be deployed into repayment of this obligation. Now, uh, how this then works is the fact that the uh, project sponsor will typically just deduct whatever is due each year from their tax obligations and then remit the balance if there is any uh, to the tax authorities of the government. So the risk that can potentially be in place when you talk about a tax holiday does not apply in this case. It's not a tax holiday. Uh, you've spent your money and you are getting your money back. Tax holidays does not necessarily involve um, a, an upfront um, commitment from whoever is getting the tax holiday. And when I say commitment here, I mean the company or the individual is not spending some money on behalf of government uh, for them to get the tax holiday. So in this case, it's like you've lent money to the government and you need to get paid. Uh, that's how the RITC is. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rotimi. And I hope that answers your question. I can't see your name, but I hope um, that answers your question on um, council tax holidays. Um, more questions, please. Please raise your hands and you can be unmuted. Otherwise, you can use the Q&A um, chat box. Um, 